Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I'm bringing you today's word for July 1st, 2016. It's a Friday morning. I love closing out the week strong, heading into the weekend strong. So the title of today's message is Trouble and Persecution. It's flowing in the same vein as the last few messages. We've been studying a parable in Mark chapter four that I call the mother of all parables because Jesus said, if you don't understand this parable, then how can you understand any parable? And this message is part of a series entitled Refined Focus. Well, we are learning to recalibrate our focus in 2016 and to remain focused for the long haul. So let's get back to the parable. This is uh, Mark chapter 4, verses 13 through 20, Jesus is explaining this parable of the sower to his disciples. And this is what he said. The farmer is like someone who plants God's teaching inside of people. Now, sometimes the teaching falls along the path. And, and the path is like the people who hear the teaching of God. But as soon as they hear it, Satan comes immediately and snatches the word that was sown into their hearts. And we learn from another passage that Satan snatched the word because their understanding was unfruitful. That other people, Jesus said, are like seed that's planted on rocky ground, which is what we're focused on today. They hear the teaching, they quickly and gladly accept it, but they don't allow the teaching to go deep inside their lives. They keep it only for a short time. As soon as trouble comes or persecution comes because of the word, now these people, they give up. Others are like seed planted along the, or amongst the thorny weeds. They hear the teaching, but their lives are just full of other things. The cares of this world, the love of money, everything else they want. This keeps the teaching from growing so it doesn't produce a harvest in their lives. And lastly, there are some people who are like the seed that's planted on good ground. They hear the teaching, they accept it, they allow it to grow and produce a harvest in their lives, sometimes 30 times more, sometimes 60 times more, and even sometimes 100 times times more. So once again, we're focused on the rocky ground, the people who heard the word, they accepted it, but they didn't allow it to go deep in, in, into their lives. Uh, and as soon as trouble came or persecution came because of the word, then these people, they gave up. So in a message a couple of days ago about this rocky ground, I said this, I said, the boundless potential found in the word of God actually attracts opposition. Satan wants to stop you before you tap into the potential found in God's word that has been sown in your heart. So when the word comes, trouble comes and persecution comes because of the word, right? So Satan is trying to stop you. So he's bringing you trouble. He's bringing you persecution because of the word. So what does this mean to you today? I want to focus on trouble. I want to focus on persecution. And so the more we learn about it, the more we can resist it, right? The more we can overcome it. Uh, so just two uh, points today. Um, what the word of God attracts trouble and then the word of God attracts persecution. Let's deal with trouble first. So I, I like to use Noah Webster's dictionary of the American uh, English language from 1828. That's the dictionary I like to use. So in that dictionary, the definition of trouble is to agitate, to disturb, to perplex, to put into confused motion. See, when God sows his word in your heart, the Bible says trouble will come because of the word. Trouble will come for the word's sake. Now, Satan will do everything that he can to agitate, disturb, perplex, and confuse you. Satan does this because he knows that if you focus on the word that you receive from God, if you meditate and medicate that word day and night, then that word is going to change you from the inside out. And I've been Driving this point home, the word of God comes to change you. It, it produces change in you and then produces fruit from you, right? So Satan is powerless against the, the word of God. Satan is powerless against God. And Satan is powerless against the power of God lied, uh, that lies dormant in the word, right? So Satan can't do anything about the word of God. Satan can't stop God. Satan can't stop the word. But if Satan can get you agitated, irritated, disturbed, frustrated, then he can get you to the point where you lose your focus. And if you lose your focus, then you run the risk of derailing yourself from your destiny. Right now, if you love God and you're pursuing God, obviously, if you're watching this video, it's because you want to become the man and woman God has called you to be. And so if you're pursuing God's purpose for your life, then as you're running down this road, if you're running the race that is set before you by the grace of God, as you're doing that, 
You are pursuing your divine purpose and you are running down the road to your destiny. What Satan does is he wants to derail you from your destiny and that's why trouble comes. Trouble comes to get you to lose your focus, to get you frustrated and disillusioned and even depressed. I mean, there's, there are Christians that, are, get, that fall over into depression. I mean, there are pastors that have committed suicide. This is terrible. Why? Because they lost their focus. You don't want to lose your focus. Satan wants to put trouble in your way, in your path, to cause you to lose your focus, but you don't have to. You can remain focused even in spite of the trouble. Number two, the word of God also attracts persecution. Now, same dictionary, you know, Webster, 1828, the definition of persecution there is severe affliction, distresses of life, vexations, the infliction of pain, punishment, or death upon others unjustly, particularly for adhering to religious creeds or modes of worship, either by way of penalty or for compelling them to renounce their principles. So throughout the annals of time, Christians have been persecuted and, and there's been tremendous pressure put on them, asking them or causing them or driving them to renounce God, to renounce their beliefs, to renounce the word, to renounce Jesus. And, and so there's all this pressure on you even today especially in the, the society of the United States of America. I mean, it's crazy. That's like, like if you stand for anything, you're a bigot. Uh, let, let me tell you something. Listen, we love everybody. I love everybody. I mean, the Bible commands us to love and, and we're supposed to share the love of God. We can't read somebody we can't relate to, so we're supposed to love everybody. But we can't compromise truth. The Bible is still true. God is still real. Jesus is still on the throne. Sin is still sin. And people are still going to hell. So we need to be able to tell the truth and speak the truth in love. Persecution will come. That's, you can't get moved by persecution. People, the pressure, that this world will put pressure on you to renounce what you believe. And, but you have to stand. And you can't be moved by the pressures of this world. Satan knows that if you receive a word from God and you stand on that word, then that word will produce once again change in you and fruit from you. And that's what Satan doesn't want. So he puts pressure on you while you're standing. He puts all this pressure on you while you're standing on a word from God. While you are taking your stand for God, Satan puts pressure on you and he wants you to crumble, to give up, to cave in, to quit. But that's why the Bible tells you to stand and having done all to stand. And when you feel like you can't do anymore, like you, when you feel like you can't go anymore, when you feel like you can't stand anymore, the Holy Spirit will come and say, keep on standing, son. Keep on standing, daughter. And watch this. I will stand with you. Glory to God. You will stand by the grace of God, no matter what persecution this world brings your way. The three Hebrew boys are a good example of persecution. They had a conviction from God. No, we, we're not going to bow. We're not going to bow to this to this statue. We, we refuse to bow. You can play the music. It don't matter. We refuse to bow. They took a stand. And so the heat in the furnace was cranked up seven times hotter. Right. So it was level one heat when King Nebuchadnezzar got upset and he told them to crank it up to level eight heat. Now, come on now. I mean, how hot does fire have to be to kill you? I mean, level one fire is going to kill you just like level eight fire is going to kill you. That doesn't. I'm cranking up the heat is not changing anything, but that's what Satan does. He cranks up the heat on you because he wants you to give up, cave in, and quit. He is cranking up the heat on you because he is hoping that the Hebrew boys, like the Hebrew boys, he's hoping that they will bow. He's hoping that you will bow. But if you don't bow, then you won't burn. Even if they throw you into the fire, that we serve a God, glory to God, who will get down in the fire with you. If you don't bow, then you won't burn. He, God got down in the fire with the Hebrew boys and he will get down in the fire with you. Just don't give up. Don't cave in. You stand and you keep standing. And having done all, you stand. And if you feel like you can't go any further, tap into the Holy Spirit and he will stand with you. And you continue to stand no matter what pressure, trouble, persecution this world brings your way. Lastly, let me just tell you this. Don't allow any pressure, any persecution from the enemy to cause you to lose your focus. You shall reap if you faint not. You shall reap in due season. There is a season that your breakthrough is due and you shall reap in due season if you don't give up. So let's close this out 
open up your mouth and declare this over your life this Friday morning, head into today strong, close out the week strong, head into the weekend strong. You ready? Open up your mouth and say this. Say, Father, this is a season of refined focus for me. I bring my life into focus in 2016 by giving careful attention to your word. I meditate and I medicate on your word and I do it day and night. I understand how the purpose and the potential you placed inside of me, along with the purpose and potential that lies in your word, how all of that will attract trouble and persecution. But that's okay. I shall not be moved. I shall not be shaken. I shall not be swayed. I keep my heart and my mind fixed and focused on you. Even if the devil cranks up the heat on me, even if he intensifies the pressure, I refuse to quit. I am focused and I will remain that way all the days of my life. No devil, no demon, and no demonic influence will cause me to derail myself from my destiny. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, I don't know why not. Go to todaysword.org. Look on the right hand side of the website and sign up and get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. I know you know somebody who needs to watch this video. So share it with them as you head into this day. Listen, trouble can come. Persecution can come, but you don't have to give up. You don't have to cave in. You don't have to quit. You can stand having done all you stand. And when you feel like you can't go any further, you stand some more through the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you, sir.